exactly how much mobile gaming performance can you get for $3,000? Hey everybody, welcome to PC Perspective. I'm Ryan Shrout. Today we're gonna to take a quick look at a brand new gaming laptop that just came in from MSI yesterday. This is the GT72S Dominator Pro G. Now this is the sixth generation of this laptop and uh, it has some pretty impressive features. If you remember a couple of weeks ago, maybe a few weeks ago now, we actually talked about Nvidia's new GTX 980 for mobile machines, for notebooks, for gaming notebooks. Not the GTX 980M, but the GTX 980. We referenced how uh, it had a full 2048 shader cores, it was running at the same clock speeds as the desktop variant. This laptop has that in it. So you can see here we're running uh, some Grand Theft Auto V. This has no problems running any of these games, uh, and it has some pretty impressive specifications. Also has a high price tag, but impressive uh, specifications nonetheless. It is a, a Core i7-6820HK. It's a Skylake unlocked mobile processor. So you'll be able to overclock this, uh, go into the BIOS, change the settings, anything you would be able to do, essentially anything you'd be able to do with the desktop platform, you'll be able to do uh, with this in terms of overclocking the CPU. Now, obviously the cooler is gonna come into uh, a little bit more uh, at prominence here, right? You don't have some very expensive self-contained water cooler in this or anything like that. So, but uh, you'll be able to modify and overclock to your heart's content in that. You'll also be able to do that with the GTX 980 GPU. It is unlocked in that fashion as well. You can adjust base clock speed, set offsets. You cannot adjust voltages, but you can change GPU and memory offsets, again, to wherever you're comfortable in terms of temperature and noise of, uh, of the system cooler. Uh, this particular model has 32 gigs of DDR4 memory. Uh, it has two 128 gig Samsung NVMe based SSDs running in a RAID 0 for a 256 gig uh, single drive letter. And it does have a one terabyte traditional two and a half inch hard drive in here as well from HGST. Um, I will say in the storage side, it is also stupid fast. We're talking, uh, we just got about three gigabytes per second read speeds and 1.3 gigabytes per second write speeds uh, for this pair of NVMe, NVMe drives running in RAID 0. Again, really impressive numbers there. Uh, the screen on this is a 1920 by 1080p, but it is a 75 hertz panel and is also G-Sync capable and enabled and all that good stuff, right? So not only do you get a higher than normal refresh rate on this laptop, you get the benefits of the variable refresh rate tech uh, from NVIDIA G-Sync. It has other kind of interesting specs, six USB 3.0 ports, so no issues in terms of connectivity. You'll be able to hook up your, your mouse, your keyboard, your headset, storage, any other accessories you need without a bunch of issues there. It has gigabit ethernet, 802.11 AC, uh, all powered by killer networks, has an HDMI output, a display port output, as well as a USB 3.1 port uh, type C on the back. It does use the Intel Alpine Ridge controller, but they don't market it as Thunderbolt. So I don't know if that's not coming or will be coming in the future. We'll just have to, to wait and see on that. Now, obviously the biggest feature here is the GTX 980 uh, and you're gonna get some outstanding performance. We've only had this for a couple of days. I spent Sometime, we'll say, in the last two days, playing the new Star Wars Battlefront beta on it. Took it home last night for testing and evaluation, as I told my wife that I needed to do, right? So we were able to play uh, Battlefield, Star Wars Battlefront, sorry, uh, with 1080p, everything maxed out. Never really had a hiccup. Never even bothered to measure the frame rate. It was, it was, it was smooth and easy uh, uh, to play on there. In terms of benchmarks, we were able to run Crisis 3 at 1080p at very high image quality settings on this machine at 46 frames per second, just over, and GTA 5 at 1080p with very high image quality settings at over 62 frames per second. Now those are impressive numbers, but if you're looking for a quick comparison point before a full review goes up, uh, we have another system here with a GTX 980M. That is the uh, cut down, that's a 1536 CUDA core part uh, with slower memory, a bunch of other changes there. It is 20 to 27 percent slower. It's 20 percent slower in GTA and 27 percent slower in Crisis 3. So instead of getting 46 frames per second in Crisis 3, you get 36 frames per second. And that makes a big difference in terms of smoothness and playability uh, with the system. So now let's talk about price. Probably you're interested in that. It's not a cheap system. Sorry to, sorry to break the news to you guys. This, as configured, is $3,099, 3099 So you're going to pay about $3,100 for this machine. The comparable machine, the same 
essentially identical hardware with the GTX 980M versus the GTX 980 that is in this is $500 less. So you can get that machine for $25.99 versus $30.99. That's a pretty big increase in perform or in price rather for a significant increase in performance, but maybe not earth shattering increase in performance. Is it worth 500 extra dollars to get about 25% additional performance over the previous best mobile gaming machine? That's going to be something that obviously uh, everybody's going to have to answer for themselves. I tend to lean towards not maybe um, if only because of the 1080p resolution of this screen if you hook it up to an external display like 25 by 14 for example that extra performance will probably be more important if you plan to connect it to a 4k panel even more important to get that additional performance out of it whenever you can but if you are some if you're a person that really just wants the best of everything you want to make sure you have the uh optimal experience, you have the most impressive gaming results, this is really gonna be uh, the machine for you. The only other drawback other than price that we've seen is in sound, is in noise, right? So if you listen, you can probably hear the fans spinning on the GT72 here next to me. And that's kind of expected, right? Remember we have a 140 to 150 watt TDP GPU sitting in here uh, as in addition to an unlocked processor and it's trying to cool it all uh, in a fairly small form factor right if you think mini ITX chassis are restrictive in what you can do in terms of cooling this is even even more so so you can hear the fan spinning especially when you're in game uh, but if you're like me when I was playing Star Wars Battlefront last night I had on my, my new Logitech gaming headset obviously it kind of blocks out all of the sound. If you have speakers playing connected to it, it's gonna block out all of that sound. But if you're in a, in a multi-person room and you're maybe worried about the noise bothering other people, that may be something uh, worth considering. And if you decide to overclock CPU or GPU, you're gonna have to worry about that a little bit more. Uh, this is just a quick look at the new GT72S Dominator Pro G. We're going to have a full review up on PCPro.com very soon. We'll make sure we link back to it here in this video when we do with benchmarks, evaluations, talking about the keyboard, the touchpad, all that good stuff when we get the chance. We just thought you guys would like to see a little preview of a retail GTX 980 powered gaming notebook. Thanks guys. We'll see you next time.